All right, hi, it's Kathleen Randall again, coming to you with my first of my expert talk series. Um, all of you probably saw, some of you probably saw my video from a couple of weeks saying that I would bring on, bring to you all here in LinkedIn, my network, which I've been fortunate enough to build over the last 18 years in this space. And so given that you can't get away from any news about the election for different reasons, the most appropriate set of professionals I wanted to first bring on the call with you experts is Mike Delaner and Carl Carpenter. They have a long legacy of, of being true cybersecurity experts and have great experience within the government sector. And they've actually been doing specific election security work here as of late. So I'd love to open this conversation up and give you guys some food for thought here for all, for all of you risk professionals who are listening in. So first off, Mike and Carl, can you guys just give us a little bit of a background into your experience and how you, I mean, I would think election security is kind of specifically very niche. So be kind of curious as to how you may, may I suggest fell into it or kind of got, got involved with these types of engagements. So whoever wants to start first. Sure. I'll talk a little bit about our background for, for just a few seconds and then I'll turn it over to Carl and he'll tell you about some of the um, our more recent engagements um, and, and some more of our specific uh, experience in this this area but uh, Carl and I uh, work together uh, in state local government uh, is where we sort of ran across each other uh, worked together for a number of years and then um, more recently uh, have partnered with uh, with our company um, to offer a range of uh, solutions to the public sector, uh, including election security. And so we feel that background, having sort of been both on the receiving end uh, uh, as well as the sending end, that, uh, that gives us a, a unique perspective on some of these uh, issues. But election security is a very, very uh, specific subset of, of enterprise risk management practices and cyber practices. And so I'm gonna turn it over to my partner, Carl, uh, to talk about some of the work that we've been doing. Uh, well, uh, I'll let him discuss. Thank you, Mike. And uh, about me, I'm retired military. I do uh, cybersecurity of all aspects, uh, mostly for regulated environments such as financial or HIPAA or PCI, GDPR, CCPA. And how we got into this, uh, Kathleen, it's exactly like you described it. We fell into it. We have a, a bit of a reputation in the cybersecurity world um, for unique skill sets. And uh, we just simply got asked to help some people out with some, with some election security issues. And needless to say, it was uh, quite surprising on what, uh, what, what I thought election security was as opposed to what it really is. Sure, sure. And, and so actually to that point, Carl, before we get too deep into our conversation, could you define what you mean by election security? I know I was listening to NPR this morning and we and they were discussing some physical security aspects. There's obviously very much a cybersecurity discussion around tampering. So can you just kind of define when you say these cybersecurity, election security engagements, what are we talking about here? So pretty much all aspects of securing the election process, it doesn't matter if it's technical or process oriented or training or, uh, or just providing advice, but all aspects of the election process. Okay, all right, very good. So we're not gonna cover everything here on this call, but I'm gonna hit you as I normally do with just a direct question. So as it relates to what you've seen so far, obviously let those rename nameless, but what are kind of the key risks that you've started to see a trend line of that perhaps could be of concern and something to be investigated a little bit further with the different, um, obviously groups, different counties, et cetera, going forward for this process this year? So great question. Uh, pretty much everything to do with election security that I've observed or witnessed or participated in still revolve around the same three things that any leader or manager or cybersecurity guy is going to uh, focus on, which is people, process, and technology. Um, I could go on forever in relation to every single one of those, but in relation to the, the people, most of the time, uh, it, it seems as if there's um, a lack of understanding Mm -hmm. uh, the, the regulatory requirements or the state requirements or even county requirements in some cases uh, for the people side. That doesn't mean that they don't care or, or they want to do their best. It's just that there's a lack of understanding. So 
that failure to understand uh, quite often can go down the path of just simply honestly making some mistakes that shouldn't really be made. Um, quite often, uh, supervisors, uh, because elections don't happen very often, quite often supervisors can come in and, and make suggestions on their best guess, but even then they don't necessarily understand. Mm. That doesn't mean that they're certainly not, you know, they certainly don't mean well, it's just that they are just unaware. Much like driving down the road and not being aware of the speed limit, that doesn't mean that you're not still breaking the law when you're speeding. That's a bad example, I apologize for that. <laughs> um, in relation to uh, process, uh, I've seen cases where um, there was poor chain of custody. Uh, it's simply just a process of understanding how things were supposed to be uh, protecting uh, the election process. In relation to the equipment, there's been cases where um, the actual ballot box, the electronic ballot box was, was left unsecure. Uh, things like that, and and it's just simple people process technology for common sense um, activities. Probably the in relation to technology, probably the areas that uh, I was surprised the most on. If if we were talking about anything but election security, then they would probably be aware of what they should be doing to secure the election process. However, in relation to technology there's a lack of understanding uh, in those areas. So for example, we have the concept of a shared tenant environment, environment or dedicated tenant environment. Um, currently, most, election, uh, most elections are held in a shared tenant environment where somebody from Florida could see who's in Idaho, what they're voting on. Mm, uh, right. That's not, uh, it's not supposed to be that way. <laughs> But that's it. That's in a very kind of a high level. I mean, I could talk for quite some time on that. Wow. If you ask me, this conversation is starting to get pretty darn interesting. So I hope you'll join us for the second part of this interview as Carl Carpenter and Mike Delner dive into these two questions. One, what can election officials be doing now, here and now in the general election, since the polls are very much open for business? What could they be considering to try to mitigate any cybersecurity risks that are upon them? And second, the burning question I know all of you watching this are wanting to ask, which is, have our polls already been compromised? Has our election security already been compromised from these two gentlemen's vantage points who very much have been engaged with election security assessments and advisory practices here uh, over the last few months. So more on that as you join us for the next episode. Take care. Bye-bye.